this is Eric Saturn again. Uh, might have started a little bit earlier, so we'll wait a few minutes uh, before we start doing stuff. Uh, a couple things that I heard from some of the comments yesterday is number one, sometimes you couldn't hear me. <clears throat> so I will try and talk louder to see if that helps. Also, one thing I didn't realize is this is my right hand, but the picture was reversed. So every time I showed you a card that had a name on it, uh, either Mead or Sizer, it was backwards. So, lesson learned, okay? <laughs> Sorry about all that. Uh, let's see, right now, I don't see, oh, I think I see some people coming on now. Hello? Glad that you can join us. I was saying just a little bit that I was going to just do a little bit of talking before a few more people show up. Uh, one of the things that I was told yesterday was that I needed to speak louder because sometimes you guys didn't hear what I said. So I'll try and make sure I speak louder. Also, if I still am quiet, please let me know and I'll try and speak louder tomorrow. Another thing I was told was the cards that I showed you, I didn't know that the picture is in reverse. So this is my right hand, but I guess everything is backwards. So it's showing my left hand, but it's really my right hand. So sorry about the uh, little cards that I put out that did not work real well yesterday. <laughs> All right. So first thing we're going to do is look at the two things that we prepared yesterday. Right now, not a lot of stuff is happening. This one looks like it's starting to get a little foamy, which is good. That's indicating that it's probably starting. Also, the water level is not even. This one is pushed down and this one is up which usually means that there is some pressure starting to build. This one, unfortunately, looks like there's been no change yet. So we will wait another 24 hours. If there is still no change, we will shock it by adding a little bit of sugar and another portion of yeast to get it going. I believe the pomegranate one, though, should work out quite well. All right, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to make simple mead today. That is just water and honey. Very simple. All right, well, I have this nice little gas, portable gas stove. And make sure everything is good. said about any type of heat for honey is that you don't want to burn the honey unless that's what you're trying to do. Burning honey, will, of course, will give you a different flavor. Like I said, a little bit of burnt or a smoky or caramel flavor. What I'm going to do is we're going to use this one gallon jug. So I got one gallon of purified water, just to make sure that there's no coronavirus anywhere. And I'm going to put about 60% of the container into the pot. All right, what we're doing is we want to get it to a slow or a low, low, low boil i.e. you're going to see some bubbles coming up, but not a big boil, just a slight one. All right, so 
With that, since it's one gallon, so it is one gallon to three pounds of honey. Each one of these is two and a half. Of course, it doesn't come in three to make life easier, so I'm going to have to use one model and part of another. Or I can go with a really strong mead and just put five pounds in to begin with. All right. So we will go and try that out later. While this is starting to boil, of course, like I said, to start any batch from a one gallon to a five gallon to a 6.5 gallon batch is going to take about an hour. That is if you have to boil your liquid to dissolve the sugar, the molasses, the maple syrup, the honey, whatever it is. If you don't, all you have to do is just take your liquid, add either a brown sugar, a powdered sugar, granulated white sugar, put it in a bottle, stir it up, let it dissolve, keep stirring it probably for about three to five minutes, and then you can cap it off. One of the things I did not talk about yesterday because I wanted to bring it up today was specifically about boiling. The temperature for most fermentation is going to be between 65 and 70 degrees. Well, after you boil your stuff, it's going to be at a much higher temperature. So the best thing to do is actually boil your product and then slowly put it in the container and then fill it up with the rest right to the bell of it, so you get as much fermentation area as possible, and then let it sit for 24 hours. I'm going to, instead of putting a cap on it, I'm going to actually use a stopper and an airlock just so that I know I have everything ready for tomorrow. So since this is boiling, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean all my equipment so I can get it ready, have it dry, ready to go, when I'm ready to pour it in. So, I have a nice little funnel, and as yesterday, there's less water in here than I really, like I said, it should be one uh, tablespoon for one gallon. If you use half a gallon of water, it's fine. Just mainly, you wanna make sure everything is soaked. So I already put the disinfectant, water safe, or food safe, make sure it runs out. And then I'm going to dump it into my bucket of just plain cold water. Like I said, I like to do this just for the fact that in case there is any product left on it and it's not fully dry, it is designed, as I said before, to kill bacteria, which will, could kill the yeast, which is the purpose of this whole thing, is to use the yeast to ferment. So, I'll make sure everything is good and soaked. Now I'll let air dry, and then if it's still wet before I use it, I'll make sure I take a paper towel, finish drying it off. Now, I also have a wooden spoon. I'm assuming you guys know I'm gonna use it to stir the honey into the mixture. So I wanna make sure, of course, there's no bacteria in the wood or anything else. This is a little bit safer because this is brand new. But as with everything else, it is always good to show you what should be done to make sure it's good. Now, 
When you're ready to start pouring it into the bottle, you're going to need a measuring cup or something that you can scoop in and pour nicely. So I have specifically, put in that sanitizer first, a measuring cup, different sizes. It's a lot of noise. I have measuring cups of different sizes. And of course, the bottle. Now, as I was saying before, take the measuring cup. Now, you want to make sure you cover and you get everything inside the bottle, including the neck, totally clean. You can either dump it out in the sink or, this is a sanitizer, just pour it right back into the sanitizer bowl. Now, same thing, I'm gonna rinse out with cold water. Also going to try and not talk while I'm doing stuff that could make noise, that could distract. So, gently put the bottle upside down. It's better if you have a drawing rack or something like that to ensure that it drains. Now, if there's anything else that's in the bottle or even inside the funnel, you can use, like I said, a nice cleaning brush. I use various sizes to make sure there's a spot I can get to it, anything like that. The set of five brushes was like $8. So you don't need expensive things to do this hobby. So. Few more towels. Check the water. Still needs to heat up a little bit more. Like I said, the sanitizer itself is food grade, so therefore you can use it and it's not going to damage anything except kill the bacteria. So that's why I use the cold water just to make sure that everything gets off. Also, once in a while, you'll see that it leaves like water spots that is from the sanitizer. That also helps get rid of the water spot. So in case there is any bacteria that could get activated again from the sanitizer, that it won't kill the bacteria. And I keep saying this over and over because this is the two things that people are always concerned about in brewing. Number one, did I clean it well enough that it didn't, that it's going to ferment or give it a bad taste? And the other part is, please let it ferment. So, being a little bit careful in the first part is never wrong. 
Okay, I'll put this over here, clean my area a little bit more. Now, for the honey, the water's starting to get pretty good. I'm gonna use this entire thing, which is two and a half pounds. So like I said, I'm gonna need more. But all, everyone knows that once you start take, taking honey out, there's going to be honey left over. One good trick on making sure that honey still comes out after you're done is put it in the microwave for 30 seconds, heat it up, and a lot more honey will come out because it'll be warm. Just started to start bubbling a little bit, so I'll start adding the honey. Now with this process, you got all the time in the world, or all the time it takes for honey to come out. Remember the main purpose on this on uh, medium to medium high heat is to make sure all the honey dissolves nicely into the water. You always make sure, like I said, I'm using a flat bottom spoon so I can scrape the bottom to make sure that none of the honey collects on the bottom and can get burnt. Yes, this is the most fun part. Me not talking honey just coming out. This would be a great time to play some music or anything, but as they mentioned on multiple sites, if you have music or a TV playing in the, playground, in the background or anything like that, you don't have the copyright ability, uh, they can pretty much pull it or take you and mute you. All right. So that one's done for right now. I'll let the rest of it sit for some other time. And I'll put about half in here. That should make it definitely a little bit more than three pounds. I'll give it about four good gloves, two gloves, three gloves, four gloves. Let's see what that looks like. And let's put one glove, two gloves. All right. Yeah, that's about half. Well, not too bad. So we got about three and a half, almost four pounds in there. Remember, this is the point where you always want to make sure it does not stick to the bottom. Now I'm going to turn my heat off. Now, if you're using an electric stove, what will happen is if you turn the electric stove off, it'll still keep on heating. So if you turn it off and leave, it can still have a lot of heat that can start to caramelize or burn the honey. So if you have an electric stove, turn it off and move it to another plate. But if you have a gas stove, once you turn it off, it pretty much goes down to just the heat from the pot that you're using. All right, 
was something else. What would you say? And I can't remember. Oh, now I remember. One of the most important things that you should do whenever you try something new is write down what you did and the amount. So you're making a recipe. So for this, it is one gallon of water to 3.5 pounds of honey. Ah, I'm not going to show it to you because it'll be backwards. But this way, whenever you figure out what you're doing, you can tape it to the bottle. This way you know, hey, this is what it is. The other good thing is put on the date. So today is March 30th, nope, March 31st, 2020. Now, you might think, well, why should I put on the date? If I put it in there and ferments for two or three weeks, who cares? Well, once you transfer it to a second fermentation, you want to take the same card and put it on that fermentation bottle and put down the date on when the second fermentation started. This is going to tell you, first of all, how long the first fermentation took, then how long the second one took. Now, you should always sample a little bit to see the flavor, to see if you need to add more honey. Maybe you want a higher alcohol content, but you don't want to add more honey. You can just add some brown sugar or molasses to change the flavor or whatever you want to do. But every time you make a change or set a new thing, i.e. want first fermentation to second fermentation, write it down is you're going to go and start putting that on some of the bottles. And you can name the bottles, you know, one through 10 was my first batch. My second batch, uh, 20 through 29. Third batch, 30. And this way you can go and say, oh man, batch 20 was excellent. Crap, what did I put into it? There you go. And we've all done it. We're like, going so fast, or hey, I'll remember it later. Two months later, you're not going to remember if you put three pounds of honey or four and a half pounds of honey. And that could make the difference between a very specific flavor profile. Remember, part, well, the main aspect of this is what you want. I want to do this. I love lemon. So, uh, or lemon juice. So I'm going to create a very lemony uh, wine or a mead or whatever. And at that point, you're like, oh, this is great. And your friend tries it and it's like, oh, it's a cough syrup. Oh my God. This is what you want. You can make stuff for other people, but most of the time, if you thoroughly enjoy it, everyone else will thoroughly enjoy it. Now, right before we start transferring into the glass bottle, some of you might be thinking, well, should we really worry about the glass bottle and hot liquid and a cold bottle or whatever like that? It's not going to be as bad of a situation as you think mainly because we didn't take it up to a full boil, okay? If we, like I said, just a nice little rolling boil, the temperatures are not going to be so hot that the temperature contrast is not going to be so great. But one thing you can do is put in, and we'll do this right now, some cooler water into the container. So, I will take my funnel, put it into the bottle. Go 
lower it down. Now, since you're using honey, what you're going to do is you're going to get a very sticky glaze over anything that you're trying to use to scoop. So you always want to make sure you have a lot of napkins and clean off any areas that you know have a high tendency of dripping. Get a few more towels. does not hurt to also put it underneath the bottle a little bit. So if it spills, it'll spill on the towel. And like I said, there's no rush. Take your time. And if you want to, you can even let this cool for an hour or two before you start transferring it into your first bottle. The one thing that you guys cannot experience right now is the aroma of this. And that is going to be one of the things that you're going to really enjoy because, oh, it, it's honey, so it's nice. But when it starts to get warm, you're going to see, oh, this is clover honey, or this is uh, blueberry honey, or this is chamomile honey, or whatever flavor honey that you want, you're going to get the nice aromatic effects of it. Now when you start getting the smells and everything, that's going to be your first indication of how it could potentially taste. Now, one of the things I also have is I have a thermometer. It is a digital laser thermometer. So what I do is after I get it into a bottle, I can then start checking the temperature of what the mead or cider or whatever it is that I'm using is at. So I already know that this is gonna be way too hot. But tomorrow, I can go, okay, in the morning, uh, it's still at 76 degrees. I'll wait till the afternoon. So, and you might say, it's a one gallon bottle. It's not going to take that long. That's true. But when you get to the five, the six and a half gallon ones, the temperatures can take a long time to transfer up. Now, one of the things that I do specifically for temperature is, since we're living in, well, I live in Fargo, North Dakota. I think I got some honey on my shirt. During the summer, it's pretty nice. You can pretty much make it and just put it in a closet. It's going to stay around 65, 70 degrees, and that's fine. In the winter time, hey, some of us have some pretty drafty houses. One room temperature is going to be different than a different room's temperature. It's called zoning, but anyway, that's a more of a construction aspect. One of the things that I do, and I'm lucky, I have two bathrooms, one upstairs and one downstairs. The one downstairs needs work done on it. So in the winter time, what I do is, A, no one gets to use the downstairs bathroom, and I just put the five gallon carboys in the bathtub. Well, why the bathtub? Doesn't it actually get a little bit colder? Maybe. 
But the one nice thing about it is that I can actually run warm water in the bathtub to increase the temperature to a nice fermentable temperature. So some people will go and put um, a warm or electric uh, heat mat. There's actually heating blankets for carboys so that people can make sure that they have the right temperature. There's a lot of different ways to ensure a stable temperature. Some people try and find a room in the middle of their house so it's away from all the windows and they put it in a closet. Some of this doesn't always happen, but say something, there was a mistake or something happened and all of a sudden from the bell on up, it just really foams like crazy. And then all of a sudden it starts to overspill. And since it's in the bathtub, if it's a mess, I just wash it off. If not, what you want to definitely do is have some type of pan. Now I'm not saying like an aluminum foil pan or anything like that, those just crumble. But you really need a plastic or, well, it really a light or heavy plastic pan that you can set it on so in case it overspills or anything like that, you're not gonna have a problem. And that's pretty darn good. So right there, right at about the bell, is where you want to put the level. And you only have, I mean, yeah, you can pretty much see that, only that much left over. So that's not too bad. So like I said, probably because I put a little bit more honey in, or maybe I added a little bit too much water to begin with, it happens, but that's not too bad. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cap it off and also make sure that you want to clean everything. Because you don't want huge amounts of sticky uh, utensils or equipment that number one, could have other bacteria grow on, but you don't want that. You could get ants. I'm not saying everyone has ants, I'm just saying you could have ants. You don't want that in there. It's just so much easier to clean while it's still warm than trying to have to clean it back up. And the way to do that, of course, is to pretty much put it back in the microwave, like I told you earlier, and it works pretty well. All right, so this is my number six stopper with an S airlock. Remember, it is too hot to ferment currently. Yeah.
top on. And then tomorrow, for the next one, we will actually do a couple ciders. <clears throat> we'll also put the yeast into this one. And we will also start looking at different flavor profiles. So that will be part three. Part four, hopefully, uh, we might be able to either Thursday or Friday uh, try and talk to another person who has started doing this. We'll try and see if she's interested in bringing her stuff over and we'll do a transfer from her first initial fermentation to a second fermentation bottle. But in the meantime, we're going to discuss a lot more things. Everything, especially on the flavor profile, from things that you can use very easily around the house to things that you might not think about. Things like tea. Tea is a great way to add some good flavor, create a very different flavor profile than just a straight standard mead or cider. Because what happens is you want a flavor. Do you just want one flavor or do you want a nice contrasting flavor that works well? Like apples and cinnamon. Very good contrasting combinations. Very good going together. Hey, maybe lemon and ginger. Maybe you want to add this stuff later at the end instead of fermenting with it. So we're going to talk about all these little things later on. But please, this is the very first one on actually heating up the mead create a very basic water and honey meat. So please give me information. Please talk louder again. Whenever you're doing something, it overpowers the noise, or the noise overpowers you, so uh, try and make that more convenient. I am here to make sure I try and do the best that I can and try and help you guys think about different ways and really wanting you to, to try this yourself. Like I said, very simple, five, six dollar, trying it out. This is much more of about a 26 dollar pertaining to getting the bottle. But everything that comes into play is going to slowly build and get bigger, adding more things and understanding the entire spectrum. Like I said, the first two weeks, are going to be mostly on just on meads, ciders, parries, and wines. Uh, I have not really gotten much into ales and beers and anything like that. I will do some research. If I feel confident about it, maybe I'll try it. All right. I'd like to all thank you all very much for attending, and please show up again tomorrow for the next wonderful excitement, and hopefully that one will be brewing pretty good or bubbling. See you tomorrow. Thank you.